Hello and thank you. Hello Nick. Okay. So, we understand that giant cell arthritis by its name is a type of vasculitis. Can you tell us which vessels are affected by it? Um, so it's mainly the vessels of the head and neck, mm -hmm. um, excluding the intracranial ones. So mainly branches of the external carotid, a few branches of the internal carotid, the proximal branches. It can affect some other large arteries such as the aorta, and that's one of the causes of death uh, that can occur, and also other arteries in the, and even coronary arteries or uh, mesenteric arteries as well, but it's mainly the head and neck excluding the brain. Okay, so a patient comes to you and they have giant cell arteritis. How do they present? Uh, well, that's part of the problem, really, that they can present with, with a huge variety of symptoms. Um, the type that we see in ophthalmology tend to be the ones where the cranial end is more affected, so they tend to come with headaches. Um, normally a recent onset headache, which could be anywhere, not really characteristic of, of this condition compared to any other type of headache. Mm -hmm. They often also have scalp tenderness, so it hurts them when they touch their scalp or they comb their hair or rest their head on a pillow. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously visual symptoms, they could get visual loss in one eye or the other, it could be permanent, a sudden loss of vision which has stayed, yep. or it could be intermittent. Occasionally they can get double vision, that's less common. Uh, and then there's this rather rare symptom called jaw claudication, which is where they get a problem with chewing, a uh, progressive problem with chewing as they work their way through a meal. Uh, and then systemic symptoms such as you know, uh, polymyalgia, rheumatica type symptoms of stiffness in the shoulder girdle, malaise, a bit of loss of weight, low grade fever, things like that, just not feeling right. Okay. So your patients come to you and your index of suspicion is very high. Yeah. How do you confirm it? What's the, what's the proper way to diagnose it? Okay, so the diagnosis is basically with blood tests first of all. So you need to do a CRP, a C-reactive protein and an ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, mm -hmm. both of those, those should be raised. Sometimes ESR can be normal, but CRP is very rarely normal. Mm -hmm. And you also need to do full blood count as well, make sure the white cell count isn't raised, which could be an alternative cause for raised inflammatory markers. Mm. And often the platelets are slightly raised as well. So if they're back, um, you know, they're pretty much pointing you in the right direction if the, f if the symptoms fit. Uh, you also need to do a, a biopsy of the temporal artery, hmm. uh, even if you're certain that you've got the diagnosis. Really just to, so you've got it absolutely 100% because this patient's going to be on steroids for a long time and you don't want any doubt about the diagnosis later. Temporal artery biopsy is also useful if there's any uncertainty about the, about the diagnosis. And who does the biopsy? Is it you guys or do you bother um, the uh, vascular surgeons? It very much depends on which hospital you're in. Um, ophthalmologists are trained to do it as part of their training, it's not a difficult operation, but in many hospitals it's the vascular surgeons or even the general surgeons. Uh, it's a simple procedure, a small cut and ligate both ends of the artery. You need to get a good length, a good few centimetres, but you can, anyone can really be trained to do it. Okay. So you've got your biopsy, you've confirmed that that's what the problem is. How do we treat it? So the treatment is high dose steroids and the important thing about this is they need to be started immediately mm -hmm. even before you've got the results of all your tests back. As soon as you have a suspicion you whack in the steroids. Uh, we would typically give 60 to 80 milligrams of prednisolone. Um, an alternative would be IV methyl prednisolone, uh, 500 milligrams to a gram, depending on how, uh, how bad the visual uh, complications are, I mean if they're already losing vision in their second eye, we would normally pulse that with IV with pred. Otherwise oral prednisolone is, is fine um, and that starts off at a high dose and comes down quite slowly so the taper is a major thing about the treatment. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're on high dose for at least the first few months, um, coming down to 40 milligrams and then slowing down and they're normally on about 10 milligrams by about a year afterwards and they often tail off completely by about 18 months something like that so it's a very long course of steroids okay okay so say it gets missed yes what happens okay i mean that's the issue really uh, most of the times that a general doctor will come across it it would have been missed mm. because it's so hard to pick that needle out of the haystack yeah. uh, there's a high chance that you'll end up with an old patient who's gone blind in both eyes or at least one eye um, it, untreated once one eye is affected the other eye will often go within 24 to 
48 hours. Right. Okay. So uh, if it's missed on the first eye and they're not seen quickly, then then disaster really follows. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we like to finish up just by asking the same question. So we imagine that we are a final year medical student or an F2 in A&E in the middle of the night or a GP trainee. What few things do we need to know about this to keep ourselves from being sued? <laughs> so, I mean, the, the number one thing is that if any patient over the age of 60 comes with visual loss, it has to go through your mind that this could be giant cellulitis. Okay. The danger is not thinking about it. As soon as you've thought about it, you're going to ask the right questions, you're going to do the blood tests, and hopefully you won't miss it. But if you don't even think about it, then, um, then that's when it'll get missed. Yeah. Okay. And if you have anything else to add? No. Great. All right. <laughs> Thanks Thank you very much. much then. Okay. Bye. Thanks.